April meeting of the Human Resources Board to order. Present are Mark Leckman, Chair. John Farrar. Brett Harris. John Lucy. Diane Boyle. Thank you all. First order of business, let us review minutes of the March meeting. Take a minute. Chance to look through. Is there a motion to accept? Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the minutes? Aye. 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 Minutes are accepted as written. Thank you, Diane. Next order of business employee issues. John, anything to address this month? Nope. Thank you. Personal actions and job vacancies. As we talked about in March, uh, the two positions in the assessor's office. Uh, needed to be refilled. We did take the opportunity to meet on March the 13th with Tracy Blaze, the uh, town administrator, who's also the hiring authority, hiring manager for this position. And we did a thorough review of the principal assessor's position and ended up with a, a reclassification. Mm -hmm. I don't think we spent much time talking about the second position. Uh, there was no, there were no changes yeah, in the okay. job description, so that was left. Okay. And I'm not sure what's happened since then. I know Tracy has been actively interviewing. Mm -hmm. Diane, do you have an update on where she sits on that? Uh, so an offer has made, been made to a candidate um, for the principal assessor position. Um, he will be starting... I so it's accepted? Accepted, yep. Wonderful. Accepted the position, um, looking to start, I believe, May 5th. Great. Ongoing interviews for the assessor's clerk position at this point. Okay. Nothing to update there. Is that likely also to be filled from the outside or is that? Yes. Okay. Great. And I think Tracy said that uh, she was pleased that in a pinch everyone was sort of, you know, helping the cause, mm -hmm. people from the assessor's board and the assessor's office and, and people who had been previously involved in assessing departments elsewhere and we managed to get through. Yeah, trying to get through. Great. Thank you. Uh, anything else in the uh, category of personal actions and job vacancies? Nothing I can think of besides those two. Thank you. Uh, no discrimination and or ethics issues that I'm aware of. John, safety issues? Other business. Employment application review. Okay. So I have an update. I'm uh, happy to report that we, as a board, had, had some changes that we had proposed. Uh, those were sent off to town council, and um, basically all of those were approved. Um, right. We had language that we added to clarify some things. Um, the only thing I think that she recommended, beside the language changes, under military information, we had optional listed, and I think the recommendation was why we have optional, why, why don't we just take that out? And Town Council said I would suggest keeping this in as optional because of discrimination reasons. It should not be looked upon as a mandatory um, requirement that they provide us with their military. It's up to the individual to decide whether they want to provide that information or not. Well, that seems counterintuitive. Yeah. If they are in the military or not, is the disclosure. But then if there is performance issue or history, that's rather vital. Why would that be any different than any other employer? Mm -hmm. Our comment is that we keep this as optional because of discrimination reasons. Because what? Because of discrimination reasons. I'm wondering if it's because you, as a, if you're if you're currently serving in any capacity, whether you would be disqualified as a candidate. Why would anybody? Uh, why would anybody apply for uh, a but job in the town of Newbury if they're on active duty U.S. military? Thinking like reserve. Still? I don't know. That was the recommendation. I mean, it, it, it goes with life experience and life's record. And we ask about life's record in every other way. I mean, the researches you do for criminal behavior, and in all intents and purposes, that's 
somebody could say I worked for Gillette Corporation for 10 years, and would that be optional? I sent this off with the optional highlighted with the line through it, and the response was to Can we just put a red dot next to that, see if we get more clarification? Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty good idea. How about just a paragraph of, you know, discrimination, what she means by that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Where, uh, I'm looking on this form, but I don't see Education the Education qualifications under military information, optional. Qualification. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's not actually listing the the positions or duties and responsibilities or references. It's strictly answering the question whether you whether you served in the military. Yeah, I mean, I I would add to what John is saying that on a resume review, if somebody shows up with a four-year gap in their employment summary. If you're a hiring manager, you, was that prison? Mm -hmm. So the person would say, no, I was active duty. Well, okay, that, then no, it we'll makes sense. Let we'll me okay. just get some clarification. Okay. The, the core okay. takes care of the hard stuff. Right. But there also is the issue that somebody could be vacant, you know, not employed for a period of time for other and substantial reasons. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would be kind of nice to know if somebody spent four years or two years in the U.S. military, what did they think of their performance? Okay. So. So we'll just follow up with, you know, could you give us a reason, just so we have a better understanding of why. I mean, it almost sounds, you talk about counterintuitive, it almost sounds like she's suggesting that someone's candidacy may be in some way harmed if if they were to list that they were active military. So well, I mean, I can see where that could be possibly concerning it on because of availability, and that's it. That's you right, yeah. If you're in the reserves. Yeah, I mean, that's, but that's, that can go with anything. I mean, you don't you don't you don't take a chunk of what you've done out of your, right. you know, that can go with anything. So oh, yeah, I yeah, went through we... that experience in 1971. Uh, I was on active duty till 1978 in active duty. Excuse me, and get called back twice. Mm -hmm. My employer stood by me, uh, the Connecticut general. Uh, but, but that that still it's this is. Why don't we just ask Tracy okay. to get yeah. clarity that okay. to us as a board, it, yeah. it, would, it would seem obvious that you'd want that. Included to answer more questions than it, than it raises. Okay. Uh, why is she suggesting that? So, okay. okay. Right. Um, okay. And then the final piece to what our questions were, which was the employment investigation release, which really was the main crux of it. Yeah. So um, I did. I was able to clarify that this was not to be included as part of the application. It's really for those more extensive. Um, positions, okay. town administrator, chief of police, or accountant of some sort, Gambling where money. it's a separate and complete document mm -hmm. that's really more extensive in the research of the background in terms right. of finances, etc. So our complete application would really just be these four pages. Okay, so she wasn't recommending any wordsmithing of that, just that it's only used on an as-needed basis for, for a very precious few number of jobs. Your concern was that this really was included in this made it seem just very onerous right. and ugly as far as an application, right. but right. I was able to, okay. in my email, clarify that this is to be separate, right. apart from the application process and to be only used as needed for more Certain types of positions. Yeah, well, I guess exactly. my next question is, board, does that mean now we have to define which positions that is applicable to? I mean, do we have to go that deep? Or is it subjected by, I mean, what, what, what controls who has to yeah. do that in mind? I would think that's the TA's call. Who's mm. uh, call? Right. The China Ministry's call. I mean, which I which guess positions would require that extensive a background check? And that disclosure, yeah. I'm not sure if that's... Well, do we do uh, Corey on a certain number of positions, or do we do it on all positions? So that's another issue altogether. Because mm. <laughs> that's come up several times before. You're responsible for Corey's within the police department, mm -hmm. and I've never gotten a full answer on... We wouldn't have done... We wouldn't do Corey's on anyone that's not... Um, a quarry is only done on people that are affiliated with children's library. Exactly. Well, money, you know, there could be, you know, there's other, there's, there's other, I guess the entity sets the factors where quarry is mm -hmm. applicable, but those are the main. Yeah. I don't think there's any language anywhere that, that speaks to the fact that, that any candidate for any role is subject to quarry. It says you may be. Maybe, yeah. But 
So I would like to table that discussion because I think that's a discussion that we need to go over and review because, again, I, my understanding is your department is a town approved Corey administrator. And short of that, I know- Yeah, we can't, it, yeah, it is so regulated. We can't, we can't produce it for anybody else, other, other entities in town or anything. I mean, there's right. no, there's nothing. All we can do is use it for, uh, for police backgrounds and, you know, obviously for- criminal I would like to have an understanding of who's responsible for doing it for even people that work for the Council on Aging interacting with elderly people. Well, there are, there, there is a, uh, there's a relief in the yeah. fact that you can have the applicant provide their own. You know, they can have their own seal. They can, they can petition, they can get their own quarry mm -hmm. and present that with their. But I don't think who's, who's managing that right now. Uh, exactly, that's what, that brings me to my question of, you know, is that a classification up. question? Or is that, I mean, I don't, I don't know where that. And it's remarkably sensitive information. It is. And it needs to be handled properly. Again, question for town council, what would, what would they recommend? Right, so I'd like Uniformity to Uniformity is, is the big thing too. It's gotta mm -hmm. be uniform. Right. There's gotta be some regulation who does it, who does it. It can't be, you know, whimsical either. It's who you know. does it and make sure that they are kept and kept in the proper um, filing. Well, not so much who does it, who performs that, that function, but who, who is required to be subjected to that. Well, also, who's, who else is a quarry town? If, if you can't do it for a council on aging or library, then who's, who's doing that? The, well, those entities can get, they have to go through a training and they can get their own certification through quarry. They can, you, a manager can saying, do that. Yeah, so think, to the best of your knowledge, no one else in town other than John is. Right. Right. So, so why don't we table that? I would like that to be on another agenda to go through, and I can get some research. Get clarity on that get from the council and Tracy before that. Okay. Um, well, I, that doesn't. It kind of got away from who, who is subjected to this, and who is the person that administers it. I guess it is the question. I was thought I was headed toward a simple solution here, but it turns out I opened a rat's nest. Uh, it's been on my list for a while. <laughs> <laughs> In your last day. <laughs> no, because my thinking yeah, well, was, right? <laughs> if, they're, if they're subject to Corey, wouldn't they not be subject to a more detailed release requirement? Not but I think not, just from the way that we're talking about that. So there's, coming back to this then, it seems like we ought to have a list of jobs that, are, that would be required for the, the uh, to really use this release. The employment investigation release. Yeah. Okay. And I, I mean, we could, should that be on the board that would actually do that? Or would that be the town administrator who would, would come up with the list? I think one way or the other, we would like to have a list, otherwise, it, Things would fall through the cracks. Oh, I didn't know this person needed it. Well, one person would be treated differently than you know. One applicant might be you know. You got to have uniformity. Yeah. And if there's a pyramid within the system, then the, the classification by pyramid: Class A employees, all courts. Mm -hmm. Class B, by discretion. That sort of thing. Again, right. council needs to tell us how okay. loose and and how strict we might be. Okay. All right. So we're very close from this. We just have the clarification on those two items. Can I can I open up this reopen this one? We, we moved it off, but yeah. the the military question is actually around uh, qualifications, not around job experience. The section the section is not. so it seems to me that it's asking the question: Did you learn anything in the military that would be relevant to your application? And in that sense, I think it's okay. It's just. The issue isn't optional, it would be more like if applicable. And so you would you would fill out military if in fact you had uh, 20 hours training on certain type of machinery or, or computer software, something like that, it would be, that seems to me to be per perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, it's just the optional makes it sound kind of strange. It's really having, having the applicant say, well, wait, I learned something there and I want to put it under my education qualifications. Yeah. And maybe that's what she was responding to when she said it may be discriminatory because it, there's no context in which that would be a, could be defined as a discriminatory question. Do you, do you have any experiences in the military which would be applicable to this role? I mean, you're referencing sort of the course of study and the degrees. 
Yeah. Right? The issue is what did you learn and what were, I mean, the military sends people to extraordinary levels of schooling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Technical and administrative. And, and you, you get some staff first sergeants who are uh, able to lead people in all manner of, of difficult tasks. It seems to me that, well, again, we're just, we you know, yeah. talked to her, but it seems to me that she might have received it as something that's going to be adversely affecting the ability to perform the job but through, you know, just availability. Um, I mean, that's, and she's putting the same classification about a maternity question. You, you, you can't do that, you know, yeah. because and the only reason why someone would ask anything related to maternity is, well, that's going to affect your availability, you know. And I think that might be the, the, the arena she might be I, I think we're going to ask the question. I think we yeah. want to be careful making any assumptions sure. about what her intent was by saying it may be discriminatory. Right. So let's, let's just leave it for okay. now. And, okay. So we're, we're moving along on that. Yeah. It's very close. Okay. Get that. And in terms practice. of the personnel policy update, that'll make love. <laughs> so uh, as, as we talked about in the... Uh, in the meeting minutes, uh, Diane and I did attend Board of Selectmen meeting mm -hmm. uh, when uh, we presented the finished document. Uh, it was met generally with, with appreciation and uh, thank yous from the board. At the same time, one of the board members, Damon Jesperson, did thankfully share with us that he had been studying the document and that he had some wordsmithing responses he'd like to share with us. And so as a result, uh, Diane and I met with him last week. Last week? We sat with Damon for about just under an hour and he had some really good wordsmithing suggestions, curiosities, questions, most, most of which we were able to nailed down, there were two or three things that, that we're gonna to bring to town council and Tracy's result, some questions he had. So uh, I thank him on behalf of the board. I was appreciative of the fact that at least one of the five had taken the opportunity to, to, to read that document. I asked him if his wordsmithing suggestions or concerns were his or were they representative, representing the board of selectmen? And he looked at his shoes and he said, no, they're mine. <laughs> So uh, at this point, I can't imagine we're going to hear from any of the other four selectmen. Yeah, so just to step back, at the Board of Selectmen meeting, they did approve the document yeah, approve pending the wordsmithing. Right. You know, he did pick up on a couple things, um, and it was discussed that if there was anything of material um, change, right. that it would then go back to the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. But everything that we talked with him about the other day was really yeah. just... Yeah, there was nothing material. There was nothing material. Yeah. So, so it is still an approved document. Because now the way we've changed the bylaws in town, it's a living, breathing document which we can change, you know, three times a month if we choose to, yeah. without without town meeting, <laughs> without town meeting approval. So, so, uh, so there'll be a few nits and nads there, but otherwise we're in great shape there. So thank you all for that. Uh, Human Resources Board appointments, nothing new there uh, that I'm aware of. Tony and I did. Uh, talk about a gentleman who I had approached 18 months ago, I think when we were looking for Tony's seat, I don't think it was your seat, John, I think it was Tony's, uh, who had expressed some initial interest and then backed off. He had once again indicated he'd be willing to think about it, which he has subsequently done, and again, a second time has chosen not to participate because of other things that's going on. Fine, he's a retired HR guy, would have been a, a nice addition to the board. So we are at ground zero in our search for a replacement for Rick. So again, as, as we will talk about every month until such time as we find someone, please keep the eyes and ears open. And if there's anyone that, that you think would be appropriate, please let me know. Happy to reach out to that person. At this point, I think we should cast a wide net. I don't think it has to be specific to a human resources background or legal training or, or anything like that. Just uh, I think we're looking for candidates who um, have an interest you know, have a passion to help the town, bring some common sense to the board, and, uh, you know, who are available to help. Would it help to catch the other boards who have probably got a list of folks that they've interviewed at finance and, and, and planning yeah. levels and ask if, do they have a queue uh, that we might yeah, tap into? Because yeah. usually those folks have already vetted them. And, and the more people that know them, I mean, it's a, when, 
when I met you, it, it follows that you know, I've known, known uh, a few people that put my name in the bin for 40 years. So it's, it's nice to just know people that, sure. of, of, of uh, over decades. If nothing else, I'll troll Dunkin' Donuts at the traffic circle every morning at 9.30 to see who, <laughs> who's available. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I think that's a, is it 9:30? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, 9:30. Actually, there's a lot of law breaking going on. That's like, that's considered you know assembly, and not allowed yeah. in the colonies. Uh, perhaps I'll raise up a town meeting tomorrow night and ask for. Okay. I think there are a couple other appointments that end June uh, 30th, 2019. That will. I'm assuming everyone else is continuing on to serve. Oh, yeah. Am I one of them? I think it might be. I think I'm September. I thought. They're all, they're all either June 30th, 19, or June 30th, 2020. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming everyone else is on board. I just two years ago. Because <laughs> <laughs> so. you like our company. I think Tony, didn't Tony have somebody at uh, Caldwell Farm? He was That's the gentleman I was just referring to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so okay. we are open and ready for business if, if anyone else is interested. So let us know. Okay. Uh, anything else in other business? One quick question is uh, interesting. The fellow that uh, Tracy received the, the go ahead on for the assessor's office. I, I had written down to a dear friend of mine who, who was an assessor down in, in Annapolis for a while, and he sent me up this remarkable piece he, he, uh, from the Commonwealth of Mass. I don't know which town, I think he etched it out. What enormously detailed requirements. And Annapolis is 6,850. So we're almost identical towns. Oh. Hmm. Except we're missing, you know, like, uh, you know, a federal academy. But we do have a small academy, mm -hmm. very intimate one. Uh, um, well, are you suggesting you that have, should, well, is that, is that a job description? No, yeah, it's just a, 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 I asked him the point question. I went down for a military reunion. I point point blank asked him, "We're we're looking at a new assessor's position. And what does it take? And what does it take in your village? And because it has so many commercial enterprises and so many extraordinary boats." Uh, in racing fleets, it, 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 it connotes a, a very broad level of the ability, and it lists all of the, uh, the chapters and verse, and, 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 the, and they have a lot of condominiums. You've got a lot of retired military there, so you've got remarkably uh, institutionalized uh, step living complexes, three of them. I, I went and visited two of them myself. Uh, and the, the ongoing is that this, the, their assessors got a master's degree finance and, and mathematics and, and, and IT. Yeah. What, what, what do we have now? So I believe, I have not seen his resume, but my understanding is he worked for the Department of Revenue. I don't, I don't know what his education is, but um, apparently he comes with quite a bit of experience. Okay, as an assessor in another location? or No, he, he worked for the Department of Revenue okay. as it relates to the assessing function. But I, again, I don't have, I, I haven't seen his resume. Are we allowed to see that, or is that something that's closeted as well? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Ask Tracy. But it was it was an ex it was an interesting exploration with. Uh, she seems pleased with, with, with Good. what she's been able to. That's um, her responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Last time I talked about it, she said she had a uh, a short list of people whose whose credentials were she thought were appropriate. And I'm very excited about the prospect, but I haven't spoken to her since. So. At the end of that stuff. Yep. <clears throat> okay, anything else? If not, let's talk about our next meeting, which as of now is scheduled for the 27th, which Diane has reminded me is the holiday weekend, right? Yes. That's Memorial Day. Yes. I'm going to assume people have prefer to reschedule. I would. Yes. So, uh, we can look at the previous Monday, which is the 20th. Or we can jump ahead to the following Monday, which is June the 3rd. I have no preference. I'm going to vote for the 20th if that works, because then we'd have our final meeting in June. If we wait until June 7th, we'd have the two very close together. Mm -hmm. Are people okay with Monday, May the 20th? You okay with it? Mm -hmm. Tony will be back by then. I'm going to assume he'll be okay with it. No, we can as, I, as, I, as I remember, it seems, seems good to me as well. So we're going to change it from the 27th to the 20th, mm -hmm. Monday, May the 20th at 4 p.m. Change it on the calendar. Yeah. Okay. That's 
consider that confirmed unless we talk otherwise. And if there is no other business, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Is there a second? We are adjourned.